Hey everyone, it's Josh here. In today's tutorial, I'm going to be walking through the platform called Google Gemini, or as it used to be called, Google Bard. Now, this rivals the likes of ChatGPT, Claude 3.5 Sonnet, and Microsoft Copilot, and is Google's flagship AI chat model. So today, I'm going to be walking you through the platform, just exploring honestly how does it do, what's the user interface like, and how does it compare to some of the other chat models that currently exist out on the market today. So without further ado, let's jump right into it, showing you everything you need to know about Google Gemini. So here we are, jumping right into things. It says, hello, Josh Mountain, how can I help you today? Brainstorm team bonding activities for our work retreat, road trip, drive time, and kid entertainment ideas. Just a few brainstorming ideas that it does for your first prompt if you've never used this sort of chat model before. And as it says here, humans review some saved chats to improve Google AI. If this setting is on, don't enter info that you wouldn't want Google employees to see. Pretty much just don't enter anything personal in here because there are people who are going to review these chats. So a good thing just to keep in mind. So down here, we've got pretty much everything you'd expect to see in an AI chat model. We have the prompt details that you're going to enter here. We have images and we even have the ability to use the microphone. On the left hand side here, we have our chats, which I have none right now. In addition to Gemini here, we also have Gemini Advanced, which if you hit the upgrade button here. Now, Gemini Advanced is exactly what it sounds like. It's the upgraded version of Google Gemini. For 27 Canadian per month or about $20 US, you get access to the next gen model, 1.5 Pro, 1 million context tokens, if you know what that means, and the new and exclusive features. In addition to that, you also get access to Gemini in Gmail, Docs, and more, two terabytes of storage in Google Drive, and other Google One premium benefits. Essentially, Gemini Advanced is the more advanced model for connecting all the apps that you use on a day-to-day -day basis, such as Google Sheets, Google Docs, with an AI chat model. But with that being said, it's time to get into our first prompt. But before we get into our first Google Gemini prompt, I do just want to give a quick shout out to our AI newsletter called Neural Frontier. Neural Frontier is a newsletter that we publish about once per week or so that has all the latest tech news, specifically relating to AI, tips, tricks, and tools that you may not know, and all the latest AI news. If you're someone who considers yourself tech savvy, Neural Frontier is a great newsletter for you to stay updated on everything AI related. So if you're interested in something like that, I'll leave a link to it down in the description below. But with that being said, let's get back to Google Gemini. Okay, so let's see how it does. I'm going to type in the first prompt here. I'm just going to say uh, generate a workout for someone in less than an hour. I'll just type that in there and we'll see what we get. As we can see here, it's taking a little bit to actually create that, but we have the quick blast workout under 60 minutes. This is a full body circuit designed to get your heart rate up. Talks about the warm up, circuit, cool down. I can scroll through, it's got tips and modifications. We have the ability to actually go and double check the response with this Google button, which is probably the biggest selling feature of Google Gemini as compared to something like Claude or ChatGPT or Microsoft Copilot. That is, if we think something in here is wrong, we can just hit this button, which would actually take everything that was just said and automatically fact check it on Google. And if it's right, well, obviously it'll tell you it's right. And more importantly, it'll tell you if it is wrong. In this section down here, we have the ability to actually go and modify the response. So for example, if we wanted to have a little bit shorter of a response, instead of literally typing in shorter, I could just say, okay, well, I want to hit this button that says shorter and we will get a slightly shorter response. So we have our quick blast workout and boom, much more simplified layout, much more simplified answer. What's interesting about Google Gemini 2 is you can actually listen to the responses in real time. So if we hit this button here that says, listen, and it'll actually read it out to you. And something cool here, if I actually wanna see the drafts of what Google Gemini actually cooked up, but didn't end up giving to us in the end, I can actually hit this button that says show drafts and we can see the different slight variations in what it was giving us. So as we can see here, it's got warm ups and it's got all the titles as before. And then if we go to draft three, it just has straight up just a whole list of bullet points here. And we can actually go and select each one of those and rate it all the same stuff as our regular one. But that just shows you what goes into a particular answer with Google Gemini, an interesting thing here. But if we don't really like any of the things that it's giving us here, let's say for example, we just, none of these are working for us. We can actually hit this regenerate drafts button here and we can get a whole new set of drafts based on that one particular answer. And we can go through here and again, go through each individual draft until we're satisfied with the response that we're being given. Something interesting about Google Gemini is the fact that you can actually upload images to it and it's gonna scan them and actually see what is in the image. So right now I've uploaded a picture of Zion National Park and I've simply asked, what is this? Now, this is the test I always use with any AI chatbot because I found with each individual model, they have a slightly different response. Some models directly describe what is in the image itself and then tell you what it is. Some models say, this is exactly what the image is of and this is exactly what you need to know about that place. Some models, just simply state it out and don't do any further research. So I'm curious to see exactly what the response here is gonna be and what kind of answer we're gonna get. So I've got that picture of Zion National Park and I've said, what is this? And we're gonna send that off and we're gonna see exactly what it says. 
So let's see. Interesting. So the response that it gives us is the image you sent me shows a view of a canyon surrounded by steep, colorful cliffs, giving the literal details of what the image is actually of. And then it says, it looks like Zion Canyon, which is located in Zion National Park, Utah. Here's some other names for this place, Zion National Park, Zion Canyon, and Angel's Landing, which is what it's most commonly known as. Is there anything else you would like to know about Zion National Park? Very short and sweet. Something that I find interesting about Google Gemini is that because we asked it for shorter responses in the past, it's applying that context and that logic to future conversations. So for this prompt here, I didn't tell it specifically to make a shorter response, but it took that understanding of me wanting to have shorter responses and put a very simple literal response of what the image is of, a very simple understanding of where that place is actually located, and some other names for the park. So it's very simple based on our tailored design for us. And again, if I go to show drafts here, we can actually see that this is only draft one. If we go to draft two, we can see it automatically tells us that it is the Zion Canyon. And then draft three, we've got a much more detailed response of what it actually is. And if I actually wanna select this part here and hit this edit button, I can modify it. So I can either say regenerate, make it shorter, make it longer or remove it entirely. So let's say for example, I just wanna take this whole first part out right here and I go and I hit remove it's gonna actually go ahead and remove that and you'll see what we get in just one second. Whoa, interesting. So Gemini couldn't actually remove that part of the text. I imagine it's mostly because of the fact that this is literally stating what the actual text is or potentially because it's on a draft. But this is an error that we've encountered with Gemini, so that's good to keep in mind. Now, something really cool that we can explore here is the actual extensions portion of Google Gemini. So if we go down to the bottom corner here and go to extensions, we can actually see that there are extensions to help bring it all together, as it says. We've got Google Flights built in, Google Hotels built in, Google Maps, Google Workspace, YouTube, and YouTube Music if you want. So because Google Flights is automatically built in, let's ask it a few questions about travel. Is it able to find us the best deal on a trip to Brazil or Australia or maybe South Africa? Let's go and see exactly what it can do and if it can combine the technologies with Google Flights, Google Maps, and other Google flagship products to actually provide a tailored answer based on something that couldn't be given by other platforms that don't have access to the same data as Google. Okay, so I put in a very simple prompt here that simply says, plan me a trip to South Africa for two weeks, including mapping and flights. Let's see if Google can actually pull the data from Google Flights and Google Maps to make a answer that is gonna be a little bit better than its competitors that don't have access to those tools. So I'll hit submit here and we're gonna see exactly what we're gonna get. Okay, so right off the bat, we can see that it pulls in information from Google Flights. It's able to recognize the fact that I've asked for information about a trip, I've asked for flights, and we can see that Google Gemini doesn't always get it right, so we should double check the following flight details. We can see that my location here uh, is gonna to go to Cape Town, 13th of January to the 27th of January one adult and we've got that information, but it says here is a possible two week itinerary for your trip to South Africa. We've got the flights from where I am at and we put the details on Google flights. It gives us a breakdown of what we're actually gonna be doing when we're in South Africa and backs it all up with Google flights. If we scroll down even farther here, we can see that it actually gives us the breakdown of Google flights from where we are currently at to where we are going to be flying to. And that displays the return flights as well. And multiple different options here, including the prices. So let's say for example, that I don't really like this and I wanna regenerate that draft. So I'll go ahead and hit the regenerate button here. It's gonna go ahead and take a look at it one more time and give us a slightly different response. Now, because it's pulling information from an extension, you don't have the multiple different drafts available to you. You can only regenerate it as a whole because it's gonna be pulling that information from different sources. So that's always something good to keep in mind. Now, something that I should point out here is that I gave it a chain set of instructions, meaning that I told it to find flights and then also create a map for it whatever that would mean to Google. So it didn't actually do that, it just solely focused on the flight portion. So what happens when I actually ask it directly, go ahead and create a map for this, or give me some sort of map that would relate to this trip. So I've simply said, create a map plan for this, whatever that means, and as we can see here, now it's actually chaining Google Maps, and so it says, sure, here's a map for your two week trip to South Africa. South Africa, Cape Town, and Kruger National Park. As we can see here, it's given us the Google map and it's highlighted the three locations where we are actually at and we have Google Maps automatically just built right in. Now, imagine if you were gonna do that in another application that didn't have access to those tools, it wouldn't be as intuitive. But also keep in mind the fact that I gave it two chained commands and instead of fulfilling both of them one step at a time, it only focused on the first one that it actually saw, which was in our case, the flight aspect of it. I had to ask it a second time to actually get the mapping component. Now, does it have any image generation? Well, let's see. Let's ask it to generate an image of the trip. And if we hit that enter button here, let's see, is it gonna be able to actually generate an image? So we've told it to actually generate an image of the trip and it says, sure, here is an image of your trip to South Africa. And we have some AI images here. Obviously we have a, a very wonky looking cheetah there. We have some 
elephants that are all trunk and all legs and it's more of a collage style not really not really an interesting photo that I could use for anything because that cheetah is looking pretty weird the other ones here we have a pretty nice picture with some you know sunflowers here you know in the nice landscape in the background here for South Africa next one we have an elephant here again much more artistically styled and then we have a picture from the actual top of one of the mountains in South Africa. Now, while it may not be on the Dolly 3 level of quality when it comes to generating these images, it's nice to know that Gemini still has some sort of image generation built in, even if the images it generates don't always look 100% accurate. Looking at you, Cheetah. So, that's Google Gemini, a very standard chatbot. It has everything you'd expect to see, the ability to generate responses, browse the web, bring in stuff from Google, generate images, even if they don't look as good as Dolly 3 does. And if you pay extra for the advanced Google Gemini model, actually connect Google Gemini to any of your favorite Google resources and other applications. So with that being said, thank you so much for watching. And as always, my name is Josh Mountain, and I'll see you in the next one.